Aisha Ibrahim is a 15-year-old girl from Kebi State in northern Nigeria. She is currently a West Africa Examination Council candidate and the author of this book titled The Girl Who Loves Her City. It's the first of many upcoming books for this young author as she has several manuscripts left in her kitty. The Girl Who Loves Her City is a compilation of Aisha's thoughts on a number of important societal issues. She joins us to review the book and talk about some of the issues she raised in it. Aisha, nice to have you on Channel's Book Club. Thank you, sir. Um, you are 15. Yes, sir. Right? Yes. And you've written The Girl Who Loves Her City. When, when did you write this? I started writing it around 2014. That's when I was 13 years of age. And I finished writing it in 2016. That was last year. Wow, 13. Yes. Wow. So uh, we'll come back to this. You are from Kebi State, in, from, from northern part of Nigeria. Is that correct? Yes. And um, do, you speak, do you speak Hausa? Yes, I speak Hausa fluently. Very fluently? Yes. In Okwana? Lafia, hello. <laughs> That's all I know how to speak, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> do you speak Yoruba? Um, a little bit. Okay. So how did you learn to speak Hausa? Did you grow up in the north? Because you told me, from here I can see that you schooled in, in Lagos State. Yes. So how did you, how did you catch Hausa? Actually, both my mom and dad, they speak Hausa very well. But actually, we're really Fulanese. Okay. So we speak both Hausa in the house. So I just grew up in an environment where both my parents speak Hausa and everyone is. I think that's how I learned the, the language. The language. Yes. It's fantastic. Really lovely. Um, so tell me about this. What, what inspired you to write The Girl Who Loves Her City? Actually, um, the people in general inspired me to write it. And how, when you know, when we are united as Nigerians, and this unity made me to be inspired. Like, during the time of the Ebola crisis, some Nigerians came together and we tried our possible best to be determined and eradicate that kind of deadly disease. So even that one alone is enough to inspire me to write something down. On your chapter on corruption, <laughs> yes. You argue that we are all corrupt. Yes, one way or the other. It's not only the leaders of the government that are corrupt. Even if you lie, a small amount of lie can make you corrupt. So the best option is just to rewind back and learn from those mistakes that you make so you can achieve a better future for yourself. You know, when I first saw it, I was like, mm, I'm not corrupt. <laughs> and when, after I read it, I said, mm, 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 mm. you know, it's a very, it's, it's a very, very sound argument you made here that look corruption is not just about the big cases we hear about you know in the newspapers and on television and yes. so on, but simple things as when you are not honest when you are not um, when you are not being truthful about issues you know yeah really good and then in your chapter on indecent dressing it's like chapter six indecent dressing of mothers you went after mothers yes i had to because the way the society is now you see working more not only working mothers you see mothers on the street that are into modeling and stuff they dress in such an inappropriate manner and by that you be and you have you know you have kids at home and that will make them to be feeling uncomfortable that was this so not even uncomfortable they will also pick up that kind of habit basically copy what the yes and is. you can't really bend the tree when it's young hmm. i mean you can't bend the tree when, when it's, it's fully old, when it's grown old, when it's old, but yeah. when it's young so when you start creating such impacts on your child it may lead to so many things especially to the female children in society so you argue that to to get Kids dressing properly, parents have to dress properly, yes. especially, especially the mothers. Yes, the mothers. Basically. They are in charge. They should take care of their kids very well. They should know, uh, they should know how to develop them, especially the female children. Hmm. Okay. Then, in your chapter titled "Importance of Being Educated," that's chapter um, two. Yes. You say that though education is one of the basic needs of a person right from his, his or her childhood, some people find it difficult to study and earn a living in the rightful way. 
Yes. Actually, you know, in Nigeria now, we have uneducated persons, and some are uneducated due to ignorance. Especially in the north, you see a fully grown man, and he tell you that he has not gone to school, that he's is a farmer or something like that, which is not appropriate. So some people, some people don't even have have it in mind that they should be educated. Why some people end up as hawkers on the streets because they are not educated. And being educated helps one to achieve this major aim in life. That yes, I have done it. At least that person will be able to defend himself mm -hmm. towards certain things. And when you look at the book cover of the girl who loves her city, it has a ray of light shining to those dark, dark parts of the city there. And the city there contains illiterate people who are not educated, moral decadence. But this ray of light means that everything will get better. Hmm. That's what I strongly believe in. Hmm. Sir. So making a case for, for education. Now, in Chapter 14, you, you make a case for preserving our culture. Yes. You're a bit worried that we're losing our culture. <laughs> yes, yes. Because culture is very important. It's very unique. It's what defines you, what makes you humane. You have to value it with all your might and power. You, just because some cultures are harsh in, in some certain ways, some families are like that. But culture is one unique thing that we can't eradicate. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just a part of us. It's well, our background. I said you're 15. Your generation has its own culture. I mean, there's, there's, there's a phrase for it, you know, there's this culture of the young now that's very different from um, what people of my age will define as culture, you know, it's very westernized yes. in, many, in many ways, influenced by television, influenced by Hollywood, influenced by music, pop music, pop culture, and so on. You are not into all that, are you? No, not really, but you know, as the level of technology increases, so as many other things will also change in the nearest future. So, so in my own point of view, our culture is what defines us, whether if it's influenced by or if it's westernized or something, it's just within us. And that's mm. just the major aim of it. I'm a Fulani person and also half house, half, half Fulani. So that everywhere I go to now, people ask me like, What's your culture? Well, I would say my culture is Fulani, right? Or Hausa, I can't say anything. So wherever you go, no matter how it is westernized, your culture should define you. Don't you. lose that. You shouldn't lose that. You should hold it. Very impressive, Aisha. For, for, I mean, you've taken on very serious issues for, that affect all of us. And to have done that at, at 15 is very impressive. Thank you, sir. Well done. Thank and you. And we look forward to your next book. Yes, sir. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. Nigerian writer Helen Oyeyemi, who is the author of the globally acclaimed novel, The Icarus Girl, has been declared the Pen America Open Book Award winner in the category tagged The Exceptional Book Length Work of Literature by an author of color published in 2016. Oyeyemi won the Open Book Award for her 2016 book, What Is Not Yours Is Not Yours, with a cash prize of $5,000. Oyeyemi previously won the Somerset Morgan Award in 2010 and was named as one of Granta's Best of Young British Novelists in 2013. Helen Oyeyemi is also the author of Boy Snowbird, Mr. Fox, White for Witching, The Opposite House, and Juniper's Whitening. She moved from Nigeria to the United Kingdom at the age of four, but currently lives in Prague. I hope you have enjoyed today's show. As always, we'll be happy to get your feedback and comments through any of our social media platforms displayed on your screen. I am Olakunle Kasumo. Remember, one great book can change your life. Bye-bye.